the county border of Rutland, the village of Ketton presents a leisurely atmosphere in ancient surroundings. The Saxon church, a treasured possession, is distinguished by the architectural grace of its 13th century tower. Ketton also provides the largest industrial works in England's smallest county, identified with a chimney towering above the village outskirts. It is no coincidence that the Ketton Portland Cement Company is located here, for the famous Ketton Freestone has been quarried locally for centuries. Today it is used chiefly as an ideal base in high quality cement manufacture. On the company's estate nearby, the quarries contain a wide range of clay deposits along with abundant quantities of this limestone. Cement is a mixture of the two materials in the approximate proportion of one part clay to three parts limestone. The company's own locomotives haul the limestone to a tipler hoist. Here it is discharged into the crushing plant, then later reduced to very small fragments. Clay also is brought by rail from the quarries to the works. Each truckload is tipped into a wash mill, mixed with water, and stirred up to a clay slurry before being pumped into storage tanks. Crushed limestone with any water necessary enters the grinding mill. An appropriate quantity of clay slurry is also added. Solid constituents now become as finely divided as in the finished cement. Ground to a very smooth slurry, the clay and limestone mixture passes from the mill to six elevated tanks. The tanks contain slurries prepared slightly above and below the required carbonate of lime content. Suitable proportions are drawn off into large storage basins to produce a corrected mixture which is continually stirred. To maintain its uniformity, it is violently agitated at intervals by compressed air. The slurry is next fed into four rotary kilns, each over 300 feet long, and set at a slight incline. Constant rotation causes the slurry to flow along the kiln where it is first dried and then heated to a state of fusion at a temperature of about 1500 degrees centigrade. This fused material, known as clinker, leaves the lower end of the kiln and falls into cylindrical tubes revolving round the outer surface. The tubes contain a network of loose chains which cause the falling clinker to cascade and also give up its heat to the chains before passing to the cement grinding department. This is gypsum, essential for rendering cement easily workable. After grinding, it is added to the cooled clinker as the final manufacturing process. Storage silos deliver the cement into packing machines. One man only is required for each packer, where 2,000 bags can be filled and discharged in one hour. In bags or bulk, distribution needs a large fleet of vehicles. Perkins P6 and R6 engines power the diesel transport. to Eastfield, 
where both Ketton Cement and Perkins Power Transport play no small part in construction of the factory extensions. Another example of engines assembled in the old factory helping to build the new. Today, in all parts of the country, industry and building projects make ever-increasing demands for more cement. It is indeed a far cry from the time, centuries ago, when bare hands and primitive tools were first set to work in the quarries of Ketton, ancient village of stone. Appointed by Her Majesty the Queen to be High Sheriff of Cambridgeshire and Huntingdonshire, Mr. Frank Perkins, the company's chairman and managing director, is here seen leaving the University Arms Hotel, Cambridge, to attend a ceremonial opening of the winter assizes at the Guild Hall. But first to Trinity College, where the High Sheriff's procession, including the Under Sheriff and the Venerable Archdeacon Royal High Sheriff's Chaplain, crosses the quadrangle to Trinity Hall and the judge's lodging. The Vice-Chancellor is accompanied by heads of colleges and followed by the Mayor and Corporation of Cambridge. All are assembled to pay respect to the Assize Court judge. at Great St. Mary's Church, there follows a short service before the High Sheriff and the Judge, Mr. Justice Donovan, leave for the Guild Hall. And so the Cambridgeshire Winter Assizes are ceremonially opened with traditional dignity and a final fanfare of trumpets. From the headquarters of Graham Adams Limited, motor engineers of New Malden, Surrey, a busy transport fleet sets out on its daily duties. Included among the company's Perkins-powered vehicles is this Seddon, here seen arriving at another Surrey garage. As on many previous journeys, the articulated low loader, P6-powered, now calls to collect the fastest thing afloat the record-breaking bluebird of Donald Campbell. The association of Adams Transport and Bluebird is a long-standing one, the company having provided similar haulage facilities for the late Sir Malcolm Campbell. Transporting the turbojet hydroplane to the Lake District for successful speed trials and record attempts has been carried out for more than two years by the same Seddon vehicle. But on this occasion, there is to be no long haul to Coniston or Ulswater. Instead, a brief and unspectacular journey to central London to be made ready for a colourful annual event. In extreme contrast to Bluebird's fantastic speed on water, it is now a regulation maximum of 20 miles per hour, soon to be still further reduced to mere walking pace as Bluebird becomes part of the Lord Mayor's show. Against the background of St. Paul's, the long columns of the procession enter Fleet Street, headed by the band of the Royal Marines. The pageant that follows tells the story of the aluminium industry by means of decorated floats.
like Bluebird, the decorated floats are carried on vehicles powered by Peterborough-made diesels. But each succeeding Lord Mayor still relies on the original provider of horsepower for his ceremonial drive. As Sir Cullum Welsh, in the richly ornate coach, goes on towards the courts of justice, we move from Fleet Street to Hammersmith. For after the Lord Mayor's show comes the National Boat Show. Inside the main hall at Olympia is concentrated a world of yachts and cruisers, day boats and dinghies, auxiliary sloops and motorboats, plus various other attractions. As First Lord of the Admiralty, Lord Hailsham is present to perform the opening ceremony. By the pressing of a button, an appropriate nautical signal is reproduced, and the third national boat show, with 200 different craft on display, is safely and successfully launched. Later, during a visit to the company's stand, Lord Hailsham chats with Mr. Richard Perkins on the left and members of the sales staff. On show is the full range of Perkins marine engines, and in addition, something much less familiar. Improving on the ship in a bottle routine is a diesel engine in 400 gallons of water. Here is practical proof of how a Perkins power unit, without special preparation, will operate under the most adverse conditions of moisture. Also introduced at the boat show is this Perkins three-cylinder marine diesel. It is designed particularly for the smaller class of commercial or work boat. Though Navy helicopters and record-breaking hydroplanes are not included, over 400 different power applications support the worldwide presence of Perkins diesels, whatever the exhibition or international show. <laughs> 